hey guys this is hakeem welcome back to the channel so in today's video i'm going to show you guys how to build this onboarding screen ui of this design i got from Drupal. so let me walk you guys through the app so if i slide it's going to take me to the next slide and also i can make use of this next button to go to the next slide and once we are the last slide it's going to show this get style button and also i can make use of this skip button to take me to the last slide so if i click on this guest i button it's going to take me to the home screen so this can be any screen of your choice it can be the red screen or the login screen and also if i launch the app it's going to take me straight to the home screen which shows that the app has been launched before so in most cases the onboarding screen is used to display some information that i want the users to see once they launch the app for the first time so making use of the sync storage to save the user state in the user's device and also making use of react navigation for navigation so this is what we are going to build in this video. I'm making project available for you guys to download. So I'm putting the link in the description down below. If you like this kind of video, please give it a thumbs up. And also if not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you get notified anytime I upload a new video. And that's how I do. Let's start coding. Okay guys, welcome back. So I already created a project and also I've structured the project. So let me walk you guys through the project structure. So right here I created a folder called SRC and inside the folder I created a folder called images. So this holds the slides image, that is the illustration. And also right here I created a folder called screens. So this holds the screens of the app. Inside the screen folder I created the home screen component. Inside the component I return the safe area view component and also I return the text um, component with the text of home screen. So over here we have the onboarding screen component and inside the component I bring in the width and the height of the device and also I define some colors, the primary color and the white color. And over here I created a list of the slides. So this is just an array with each object. Each object has an ID. So this ID is actually optional. I only included it to get rid of the key um, warning issue. And also I bring in the image props which leads to the slide image and I added the slide title and also the subtitle. Then over here I turn the safe area view component. And inside the app component, I brought in the navigation container. So making use of React navigation for navigation. And also I set the header shown prop to false. So this is going to get rid of the header in the app. Then I added the um, several screens. So that's all for the project structure. Let's start coding the app. So I'm going to open the onboard screen component. And we're going to start working on the safe area view component. So for the safe area view component, we're going to give it a style. We'll give it a flex of one. So it's going to take the full width and the full height. And also we give the background color of primary. Hit save. So right now we have the safe area view component with the primary color so right now we are going to change the um, color of the status bar so to do that we are going to add the status bar component and for the status bar component we are going to give it a background color of primary so say background and give it a primary color so say colors dot primary so we have the status bar with the background color of primary right now we are going to start adding the slides to the page so to add the slide we are going to add a flat list component which is going to list the slides so i'll bring in the flat list component and let's make sure we import the component and for the flat list component we are going to give the data props of slide so that is this um array over here so now we are going to add some props We'll give the content container style. So we want to style the flat list component. Then we are going to give the height. And for the height, we'll give the height of height multiplied by 0 0.75. So we want it to take about 75% of the screen height. Now hit save. And that's all for the content container style. So now we're going to get rid of the scroll bar. And to get rid of the scroll bar, we'll say show horizontal scroll indicator. Then we'll set it to false. And also we are going to pass in the horizontal prop. So we want it to list the item horizontally. And now we are going to add the render items. So for the render item props, we are going to pass in a component called slide, which we are going to create right now. And this component is going to take in a props of item. So we'll say item. And let's bring in the item over here. Then we'll pass it right here. And this slide component is going to display these slides over here. So right here we are going to create a slide component outside the onboarding screen component we are going to add the slide component since the slide component is not going to use the state and also for performance so right here we we'll say slide and for the slide component we are going to return a view let's bring in the item props so the item over here we are going to return a view let's import the view 
and for the view i want to give it a style of align item center let's say align items center then inside the view we are going to bring in the image component and for the image component we are going to give it a source of image so to get the image you we'll say item dot image and also we are going to give it a style so we are going to give it a style we'll give the height of 75 percent and also we are going to give it a width of the screen width so say width that is this um width we defined over here so we are going to give it a resize mode of contain also a resize mode and give contain and that's all for the image component so right now i'm going to add the title and also the subtitle so to add the title over here i'm going to add a text component and let's import the component and for the text component we are going to bring in the title so to bring in title we'll say item dot title now we have the title so now we are going to style the text component and we are going to give it a style of title so say styles and we'll say title so right now i'm going to get this style and i'm going to start styling it for the item style we'll give the color of white so say color and say colors dot white then we'll give it a font size of 22 pixels a font width of bold and also we are going to give the margin top of 20 pixels and a text align of center so say margin top we'll give it 20 pixels then we'll give the text align of center and that's all for the title style so now we are going to add the subtitle and for the subtitle i'm going to duplicate this i'll change this to subtitle and also i want to change this to um subtitle so i want to get the subtitle um style and i want to style it so for the subtitle style we're going to give the color of white we'll give the font size of 13 pixels so say font size 13 we'll give the margin top of 10 pixels and a max width of 70 percent so say max width 70 percent then we'll give the text align of center and a line height of 23 pixels so say text align center then we'll give the line height of 23 pixels so say line height 23 and that's all for the subtitle to um style so that'll be all for the slider component so right now we have the um slide but once this to snap so if i slide once it reaches a certain position it's going to snap which is going to give it that carousel effect so to do that inside the flat list component we are going to bring in the paging enable props so right now if i swipe it's going to snap which gives the carousel um effect and that will be all for the slide component so right now i'm going to start adding these um indicators so to add the indicator we are going to create a component called footer so this component is going to hold the indicator and also it's going to hold these buttons um over here below the flat list component we are going to add a component called footer and over here we are going to create the component so say const footer and for the footer component we are going to return a view and for the view we are going to give it a style we'll give the height of height multiplied by 0 0.25 so want the footer to take about 25 percent of the screen height over here i'll say height i'll say height multiply by 0 0.25 hit save then also we are going to give the justify content or space between justify content space between then a padding horizontal of 20 pixels and that's all for this view so right now i'm going to add the view this view is going to hold the indicators over here over here we'll add another view and for the view we are going to give it a style we'll give the flex direction of row so we want it to render the indicators from left to right and also we are going to give it a justify content of center then a margin top of 20 pixels so it's a margin top then we'll give 20 pixels and now we have the indicator container so now we are going to start adding the indicator so for the indicator we are going to create a view so this view is going to represent each indicator and also we are going to modify the view if the indicator is active so basically if it's not active it's going to be this tiny indicator with this gray color why if it's active the indicator is going to have a white background and also it's going to be larger than the rest of the indicators so over here we'll add the view 
and I'm going to make the view self closing because I'm not going to put any um, item inside the view. And for the view, you're going to give the style of indicator. So say style. I'm going to add this square bracket because we are going to add under style to modify the indicator later on. So over here, we'll say styles dot indicator. I'm going to get the indicator style and I'm going to start styling it. So let me bring up the um, emulator. And for the indicator style, we are going to give the height of 2.5. We'll give the width of 10 pixels, a background color of gray, just a background color, give it gray, then we'll give it a margin horizontal of 3 pixels and a border radius of 2 pixels. So it's a margin horizontal, 3 pixels, border radius, 2 pixels. And that's all for the indicator style. So right now, I'm going to start adding the other indicators. And to add the other indicators, we are going to map through these slides over here. So I'm going to get this indicator view and over here I'm going to add a curly braces. Then I'll say slides dot map. I'm going to add underscore because we don't need the item. We only need the index. Then over here I'm going to um, add the indicator. So right now we have three indicators. So I'm going to pass in the key props and I'll give it the index. So it's going to get rid of the key warning issues. So now we have the three indicators. So the next step, I'm going to add the selected um, indicator. To do that, I'm going to add a state. So this state is going to be used to keep track of the current index slide. Then we're going to take this current index slide and we're going to check if it goes to this index. Then we're going to modify the indicator, which is going to signify that that specific slide is active so to do that over here above the footer component we're going to create a state we'll call it current slide index and also we bring in the function to set the index so say set current slide index which is going to be react dot use state and we're going to give it zero for the default arm um, index we are going to check if the current index is close to this index we are going to modify this type so to do that i'll say if current slide index it's close to this index we are going to um, modify this type so i'm going to bring in an object and over here we're going to give the background color of white so say colors dot white and also we are going to give it a width of 25 pixels so i'm going to get rid of these color braces to get rid of the error so now as you can see we have the first um indicator selected that is because by default the current slide index is set to zero and that's all for the indicators. So right now I'm going to start adding these buttons to navigate to the next slide and also skip the slides. So to do that below the indicators, we are going to add a view. This view is going to hold the buttons and we are going to give it a style. We'll give the margin bottom of 20 pixels and that's all for the style. So now we're going to add another view. Um, this view is going to hold this both button. That is the skip and the next button. Over here, I'll add the view, and for the view, we are going to give the flex direction of row. So, say flex direction, and give it row. Now, I'm going to start adding the button. So, for the button, we are going to add a touchable opacity component, and inside the touchable opacity component, we are going to add the text component. And for the text component, I'm going to give it a text of next. So, let's import the touchable opacity component. And now we have the first button over here. So over here, we are going to add a style to the touchable opacity component. And also I'm going to add a square bracket because we are going to modify this style. So we give it a style of BTN. So for the BTN style, we're going to give it a flex of one. We'll give it a height of 50 pixels, a border radius of five pixels. So say border radius, five pixels. Then we'll give it a brown color of white. So say colors dot white. So right here we have the button. Right now I'm going to um center the text inside the button. So to do that, we need to justify content of center. Then we'll give the align items of center. And that's all for the BTN style. So now I'm going to duplicate this button for the skip um button. Over here, I'm going to duplicate it. This is going to be skip. And for the body, we need a space over here. To do that, I'm going to add a view. 
and give it a style then I'll give it a width of 15 pixels so this is going to create a space between the button so now we are going to uh, modify the style for this key button before we do that let's type the text component so right here for the next button text i'm going to give it a style we'll give it a font width of bold a font size of 15 pixels font size be 15 pixels and that's all for this style so i'm going to get this style i'm going to add it to this skip text over here and for this skip text i'm going to change the color to white so say colors dot white and also we are going to modify the button itself so i'm going to add an object and for the button we're going to give it a background color of transparent so we'll have the transparent button over here that is this key button right here now i'm going to add this border radius to it so over here we'll bring in the border width we'll give it one pixels and also we'll give the border color of white so we'll say border color and we'll say colors dot white hit save so right now we have the skip and the next button now we want this indicator to actually update anytime we move to a next slide so to do that we have to update this current slide index anytime we move to a next slide inside the flat list i'm going to bring in the on momentum scroll end props and for the on momentum scroll end it fires an event anytime the scrolls end so we are going to create a function which is going to take the event and with this event we are going to get the offset of x and we are going to make use of the offset to determine the current index so to do that over here i'm going to create a function called update current slide index i'll say const update current slide index which is going to take an event and i'm going to take this function over here and i'm going to hook it to these props over here so why the scroll end is going to fire this function so i'm going to console log the event so as you can see if i scroll it's going to return this giant object so we are going to get the scroll x from this um event over here and to get the scroll x we we'll say const content offset x so i want to get the offset of x it's going to be e dot native event dot content offset dot x so this is going to return the content offset of x so i'm going to console log it and i'm going to swipe so as you can see we have the content offset of x so now to get the current slide we are going to take this content offset of x and we are going to divide it by the screen width then we are going to round it up which is going to give us the current index over here we're going to create a variable called current index which is going to be map dot round so we want to round the value and to get it we are going to bring in the content offset of x then we are going to divide it by the screen width so now if i console log this if i scroll as you can see we have the second index which is one and the third index which is two so the first index is going to be zero so now i'm going to update the current slide index state so to do that we say set current slide and bring in the current index i'm going to get rid of this log now if we scroll it's going to update this state which is going to automatically change this indicator so i'm going to scroll so as you can see we have the second indicator selected and if i scroll we have the third indicator selected so that's all for the indicator right now i want to be able to go to the next slide with the next button to do that we are going to create a function called go next slide so say const go next slide and i'm going to take this function and i'm going to hook it up to this button over here i'll bring in the unpressed props and i'm going to add the function over here now if you click on this button it's going to fire this um, function so to get the next slide we are going to create a variable called next slide which is going to be equals to the current slide plus one then we'll take the next slide variable and we are going to multiply by the width of the screen which is going to give us the next slide offset they'll make use of the scroll to offset method for this flat list which is going to take us to the next slide so to do that we'll create the variable called next slide index so say next slide index which is going to be the um current slide index this um state over here we are going to add one to it 
and over here we are going to create the next slide offset of this um next slide index so to do that we we'll say const offset is going to be next slide multiplied by the screen width so we are going to make use of this offset to go to the next slide and in order to go to the next slide we are going to hook up the ref and um, props to the flat list so before we do that let's create a ref over here so say const we we'll call it ref which is going to be goes to react dot use ref so we use the use ref hook and by default we we'll give it a value of null so now inside the flat list component we are going to add the ref props so say ref and we'll pass in the ref we just created so now we are going to make use of this ref to go to the next slide over here to go to the next slide we'll say ref and let's make sure the current props is available so we are making use of the optional chaining over here and to go to the next slide we'll make use of the scroll to offset so we'll say scroll to offset and we are going to pass in the offset hit save and also let's add the question mark over here now if i click on this it's going to take us to the next slide without going to the next slide we want to update the current slide index also over here we'll say set current slide and pass in the next slide so right now if i click on this it's going to take us to the next slide and also it's going to update this indicator but we want to be able to only move to the next slide if there is a slide left so right now if i click on the next there is no slide left so it has increased it to four and there is no index of four that is why there is no indicator selected over here we only want to move to the next slide if we know that there is a slide left so to do that we are going to add an if statement over here so say if and let me bring this in if next slide is not equal to slides dot length that means there is a slide left so we'll run this code over here if I click on it, it's going to take us to the next slide. And also, if I click on it while we're at the next slide, nothing is going to happen. And that's all for the go to next slide function. So right now, I want to be able to skip slides. So to do that, we are going to create a function called skip. And let's hook up the skip function. So I'm going to bring in the unpressed props over here. The so unpressed. And I'll pass in the skip function. So for the skip function, we want to get the last slide index. To get the last slide index, we are going to get the slides length and we are going to subtract one from it. That is these slides over here. So we'll say const last slide index, which is going to be slides dot length minus one. So this is going to give us the last slide um, index. So if I console log this, if I click on this skip, as you can see we have the last slide index which is 2 so now we are going to take this index and we are going to create the offset of the index so over here we'll say const offset is going to be last slide multiplied by the width so this is going to give us the last slide um offset then over here we are going to go to the um last slide so to that i'm going to copy this I'll paste it over here and also I'm going to copy this set current slide state so after we navigate to the last slide we're going to update the state also then I'm going to pass in the last slide index let me go to the first slide and right now if we click on this it's going to take us to the last slide and that's all for the skip button and the next button so right now I want to add this guest eye button which is going to take us to the home screen so to do that inside the footer component we are going to add the button before add the button we'll add a view so this view is going to hold the um guest eye button then we're going to give the style we'll give the height of 50 pixels and that's all for this view so right now i'm going to get this button over here i'm going to put it right here so we have the button. i'm going to change it to get started and also i'm going to get rid of this um go to next slide function and for the guest eye button we want it to only show if it's at the last slide so to do that we are going to check if it's the last slide will show the guest eye button else will show the skip and next button so right here i want the curly braces and i'm going to say if current slide is close to slide dot length minus one that means we are the last slide so we are going to render this out else i'm going to take the both skip and the next button 
and i'm going to put it right here now we have the guest add button because we are the last slide so if i go to the second slide we have these two buttons over here and also if i go to the last slide we have this button and if i click on this skip take me to the last slide we have the guest add button so now i want to be able to navigate to the home screen if you click on this guest add button so over here for the guest add button we'll add the unpressed props and for the unpressed props, I want to make use of the navigation props. So say navigation and make use of the replace method. So why we are making use of replace method, we want it to replace this current screen to the home screen. If we are to use the navigate method, it's going to take us to the new screen, which if we click back, it's going to take us back to the onboard screen. So we don't want if the user click back, take the user to the onboard screen. So if the user clicks back, it's going to close the app. So if I make use of the navigate method and let's bring in the home screen name so if i paste in the name so i'm making of the navigate method if i click on it, it's going to take us to the home screen or if i click on the back button for the android device it's going to take us back to the um, onboarding screen so we don't want that we'll change this to replace and if i click on this back button it's going to close the app so that's all for the onboarding screen component so i want to be able to save the state to this app device so if this app relaunch the app it's going to take this app straight to the home screen instead of taking this app to the onboard screen to do that you're going to open the app.js and inside the app.js you are going to create a state so create a state and will call it is app first launch and we are going to bring in the method to set if app is first launch then over here is going to be called to react dot use state then we'll set it to null by default so now inside the return method right here we're going to return this navigation container only if this value is either true or false else we're going to return null which is going to show a blank component let me get the navigation container and over here we'll say is our first launch is not equals to null that means this state is either false or true we are going to return the um, navigation container so i hit save so right now we have the blank component that is because this is null so if i change this to false it's going to show the onboard screen or if i change this to true it's going to show the onboard screen so now we are going to check if this state is null then we'll set it to app has been launched to true else we are going to set it to app has been launched to false so let me put in the null and over here we are going to make use of the react use effect I want this to run this just once, so I'm going to bring in the empty square bracket. So inside the use effect, we are going to check if user have saved any data to their device before using the async storage. That means they have launched the app before. Then we are going to set the um, first launch to false, else we set it to truth, and also we are going to save a data to the user device. So over here, we are going to first get a data from the user device. Over here, I'm going to create a variable called app data. So we'll say app data. So we are going to get the data from the user device and I'm going to store it to this variable which is going to be async dot get item and we are going to pass in the key of is launch. We are going to add async keyword over here and over here we are going to await for this. By default, if the user just open the app, there will be no data so this is going to return null. So over here we will say if app data is null, that uh, means the user is just launching the app. Then we are going to set the state to true. We'll say set is app first launch. We'll set it to true. I also set it to false. I'll take this and I'll change this to false. So now I'm going to display the onboarding screen only if the set is app first launch is true. I'm going to check is first app launch is true. Then I'm going to take this and I'll put it over here. Hit save. So now if I change this to false, it's going to display the home screen, which shows that the app first launch is false. Let me change it back to null. Hit save. So now we have the onboard screen. So right now, after we set this to true, we want to save first the user screen so that next time the user launch the app, it's going to take the user to the home screen. So I'm going to get this and I'll pass in the value of false. Then also we are going to change it to set item, not get item. So right now it's going to take us to the home screen. That's because we have it data inside the user um, storage. So to show it's working, I'm going to clear the app. 
So if I clear the app, it's going to get rid of any data inside user device. And I'm going to open it again. So if I open the app now, it's going to take me to the onboarding screen. As you can see, we are the onboarding screen. If I click on this, it's going to take me to the home screen. And now if I reload the app, it's going to take me straight to the home screen. And that'll be all for the video. So if you know you find the video helpful, please give the thumbs up. And also if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you get notified the next time I upload a new video. And I'll see you in the next video.